All the cars are on their starting blocks. Toko giving us a wave there from his perch atop pit lane. I'm shaking in my seat, Chris. Oh, yeah. And not just because it's cold in here with the AC running. No, shaking out of anticipation. The crowd starting to amp up. Even the marshals are clapping, getting excited, ready to go racing. Everyone here has waited for this for over a week. Since this event started, since this event was announced, it's been most of the, pretty much the most anticipated race in all time for yep. RC Racing. 234 entrants and competitors here this week in Las Vegas, and it comes down to these final 12. Everyone getting wrapped uh -oh, up. Oh, Ryan Cavalieri, Ryan Cavalieri flaming out. No. Not sure what's going Grace on there. Grace period called there for, yes, Ryan Cavalieri, the 2014 runner-up. Running to, into an issue, perhaps flaming out on the starting line. Yeah, I'm not sure whether he asked for just to bump it or for a 10-minute delay. It looks like he's just asked to bump it. Whew. That'll get everyone shaking in their boots. Yeah. Nothing like a little bit, little bit of confusion to fire everybody up. Oh, and he's being told to start from the pit lane now too. Really? Well, if you call for a grace period, that's what you have to do under the IFMA rules. Wow. So that Cavalieri, changes everything. He's going to start from, I think the rule is that the car has to be released from pit lane after the last car has cleared turn one. Wow. That is huge. A little bit of drama here to start off our main final. Great shot here from our Kyosho pit lane cam. Oh my goodness. So 2014 runner-up Ryan Cavalieri will start the main event, not from second on the grid, but from in pit lane. As the cars are held over their starting grids, we're getting ready for a start, Aaron. The excitement builds. We're ready to go racing. 2016 IFBAR 18 scale Nitro Off-Road World Championships presented by ProLine on Live RC, and here we go! Tessman leading out. Cavalieri's going to have to start from all the way back, so Ronald Folk comes through from the two. Little bit of carnage there. Lutz getting checked up, coming out of the high roller. Tessman jumps into the hole, but gets out lucky. And who can keep Ty Tessman in their sights? We've seen him do this countless times here in the United States. Watch that happen at the 2014 World Championships. If he gets out front, gets comfortable, gets in a groove, Lights he will out. disappear and you will never see him again. His fellow HB Racing teammate, David Ronafok, looking to keep him in check. Ronafok just checks up on the pipe. Someone's on their roof there Elliot, in the freak show. Elliot Boots looked to the inside of Ronafok in the freak show, hit one of the holes, flipped upside down. So Boots is going to go to the back of the line. Tessman still your leader from Ronner Falk and Tebow as they come over the high roller now. Tessman going to the inside of the hole, just clips it with the right rear, no harm done. Ronner Falk trying to cover the line from Tebow, putting pressure on early. Then Batier into the four and David Ongaro into five now. From 12th on the grid, Renault Savoya racing his way up to the top five and then shuffling back down to the bottom. And Ty Tessman with a 1.2 second advantage after sector number two. Working his way around the outside of the freak show, across the dance floor, and he's getting his boogie on. 1.2 seconds up at over his HB Racing teammate. Into turn number one, A the great Binion's shot Horseshoe. There. Great shot there, Binion's Horseshoe, as Batier goes to the four spot. Tebow in the three. Oh, Tebow got it all wrong on the Penn and Teller, jumped to the inside, did the right thing, waited for David Ronnefolk to go by. Ronnefolk trying to keep Tessman in his line of sight. Whoa, out of control on the crapshoot for Ronnefolk, and that gives Tessman a bit of breathing space now. And imagine the urgency for Jared Tebow, perhaps his best chance yet at winning this world championship that has eluded him throughout his career. No better chance for him to win it than here at his friend's track in Vegas in front of the US crowd. Running in third spot, a terrific start from sixth on the grid, but he's got his rearview mirror full of 2012 world champion Robert Battier. Tessman jumping straight into the hole there at the Penn and Teller double. He's got Robert Battier right with him as they come over the anti-up section. Now into the crapshoot 
Both Tessman and Rutterfolk getting through clean. Rutterfolk trying to close the gap to Tessman now. It was out to 2.3 seconds last time. By now down to less than one second. Through the five card draw, Robert Batye all over Tebow. The battle for third picking up early on in this one as they bounce through the hangover up over the poker table and down the straightaway. Batye looking for a way around the Kyosho driver. It's Kyosho versus Mugen in a classic battle for the third spot as the HP Racing drivers uh, teammates Tessman and Ronald Falk lead out front one and two. Ronald Falk still trying to keep that gap in check to tie Tessman in front. 1.3, 1.4 seconds now. Ty Tessman just getting a couple of cleaner oh, corners. Ronald Falk getting it wrong through the crapshoot section. That's going to give Tebow a little bit of breathing room now. Let's see if he can put his head down and start to reel in Ronald Falk. Yeah, Batier checked himself up there, loses a bit of time as we pick up with David Ronald coming across Gary Tebow. Behind him, we'll see the gap between Runnerfolk and Tebow. 1.3 seconds this time by as Tessman stretches the gap out to 1.6 at the front. We've got Tessman, Runnerfolk, Tebow, Batier, and Mayfield, your top five. After that, it's Caval uh, Boot 6, Cavalieri 7th, McBride 8th, Ben 9th, Angaro 10th, Lutz 11th, and Savoya 12th. But the action on the at the front of the pack here as the battle for third continues between Tebow and Batier. Watching Tessman still trying to stretch out that gap. 1.9 seconds now as we're following along with Mayfield and Boots going through the five card draw. Whoa, Donkey cooking through the freak show. Boots trying to chase him down. He did the same as well. Now catches a pipe in the hangover section and down Las Vegas Boulevard. Mayfield picking up a wheelie on the braking bump as well. It's getting pretty wild out there. This is our 60 minute A main. Plenty more to come. Look at this. From sixth on the grid, Tebow to third. From eighth on the grid, Batia to fourth. From ninth on the grid, Mayfield to fifth as Cavalieri is trying to fight his way back up from the back of the pack. Davide Angaro fourth, uh, started fourth, now 10th, and Lutz started seventh, now 11th. The field sort of doing a little flip-flop here in these first five minutes. Yeah, the field gets pretty inverted. You can see McBride and Fend going through the five-car draw now, just picking up with McBride through the freak show. He runs the wide line, cutting tight into the dance floor. Fend goes tight and then straight across the dance floor, Fend right with him now. They come down Las Vegas Boulevard, separated by less than Whoa. three tenths of a second. Fend putting the pressure on McBride. This is a battle for eighth and ninth, and it's still red hot. Kyle McBride slamming the door hard at the end of the front straightaway. Saw him moving over at the end of Las Vegas Boulevard, and Fend had nowhere to go but to tuck back in line. They go through the crapshoot section. Fend having to hit the brakes to not run McBride over. It's only a matter of time before he gets by and pulls away. Yeah, McBride not showing the speed he wants at the early stage of this race, but keep an eye out for McBride later in the there run. There it is, McBride flipping over, entering into the freak show. Fenn gets by. And, and so does Ongaro as well. Yep, moving up to the eighth and ninth spots. Drops McBride to tenth. Tessman leading out. He's got a two-second advantage over David Ronnefolk, his HB Racing teammate uh -oh. now. Someone Somebody getting over. That was Dakota Fenn, so he gives up those two spots now as... Angaro and McBride both get by. Meanwhile, Tessman starting to, trying to stretch out a lead. Uh, the top five drivers all had their personal best laps three laps ago now with Robert Batye, the best of them, 36.029. Batye pitting at the five minute, 39 second mark. No, that's, that must be an error. Yeah, definitely an error there. You wouldn't pit that early in a 60 minute main. Tessman, the gap. 1.6 seconds, so it's stretching back and forth between Tessman and Runnerfolk in this early stage of this race. David Runnerfolk wants to stay in contact with defending world champ Ty Tessman. You can see him going through the dance floor. Runnerfolk in hot pursuit. Then Thibaut, Batier and Mayfield four in three, four, and five at the moment. Tessman's lead 1.3 seconds at the finish line. Runnerfolk picking up the throttle, heading out of uh, over the a uh, high roller section. Oh, getting it wrong over the Penn Teller double. Getting a lucky roll, though. Landing back on his tires and continuing on before Jared Tebow had a chance to close the gap. It was 2.8 seconds between Ronald Falk and Tebow as Batye has actually moved into third. 2.4 seconds behind the Swede. Batye, the 2012 world champ, holding on to the three spot. Oh, defending from Tessman Tebow. Tessman with a mistake, and that two-second... Gap has disappeared now. Ronald Falk right behind him as they head on to Las Vegas Boulevard. Be less than a second now, eight and a half tenths of a second. This is Ronald Falk's best chance to have a crack at Ty Tessman before the first of the fuel stops. We're at seven minutes down, 53 minutes to go. Ronald Falk jumping straight into the hole at the Penn and Teller double. And Tessman 
has to start thinking defensive if Ronna Fox is going to be pushing to close up on the back of his HB racing teammate through the crap shoot and around Hoover Dam. Ronna oh. Falk looking racy. Yeah, Tessman a little wide, hit the hole up at the top of the Hoover Dam, and that allowed Ronna Falk to catch right up behind his HB racing teammate. Have to wonder if there are any sort of if there was any sort of team conversation saying, hey, we're both starting toward the front of the pack. We need to be careful, and Ronna Falk, the first into pit lane. Yeah, Ronna Falk taking the option to pit early, try and clear himself out of traffic. Tebow looks like dumping into pit lane as well. 3.8 seconds stop for Ronna Falk. Looks like Tebow triggered the line. It's accidentally the same for Robert Battier. No, Battier with a 4.2 second stop. And Ryan Lutz coming in at the 7.45 mark. So Tessman with clean air now. Has to get the job done and try and drop the hammer. Of course, Ronna Falk's in and out laps are absolutely crucial. And we'll have to see where he filters through once Tessman takes fuel for the first time. Have to wonder when Tessman will pit as it's now eight minutes and he's gone by. He does have to go 10 to be able to cut out one stop. We'll, we're going to send it down to Gary Trackside with a quick update. And here we are tracking with Ty Tessman. Goes through right there, around that little chute, up over the step up, nice and smooth. Option line, right into the hole, no problems. Here he comes, step off, nice and smooth. Boom, around the parasile. Tebow now into second. Tessman goes into that five pack, no problem. Here comes Jared Tebow through there. There goes Tebow, Rana Falk. Back to you guys. Ty Tessman into pit lane for his first pit stop, up onto the blocks, dad grabs it. Mom six, the pro line fuel stick that they designed in there and back out incredibly quick. Three and Rodafalk gets out in front of him. Oh, 3.9 second stop for Tessman and 3.8 second stop for Rodafalk. And they're about a tenth of a second apart. That advantage coming in pit lane. Rodafalk taking the lead from his HP racing teammate. David Rodafalk could see that Tessman was coming out of pit lane just as he came down Las Vegas Boulevard. Decided to absolutely send it into Binion's horseshoe. Gets the job done to get past the defending world champ. Now the Swede leads this world championship final at the 9 minute 20 mark ahead of Ty Tessman in second. The Swede is in the lead and starting to pull away here is Tessman with a, with a rough outlap. The gap now 1.5 seconds and we'll see what Ronafal can do with some clean track out in front. If he can pull away from Tessman and be the one that has to be chased down rather than the one doing the chasing. Rana Falk still looking for his first IFMAR World Championship. Would love to take it in front of this massive crowd here in Las Vegas. Barely missed out on a European Championship earlier this year. It would have been another for him uh, due to a mechanical error trying to put that behind him and grab the biggest race here in 2016. Yeah, Ronna Falk leading out from Tessman. Tebow and Mayfield going at it for, set, for third and fourth. So Mayfield, a big guy, big gain from P9 on the grid. Didn't have the greatest of runs in the semi. A couple of issues harrowing him throughout his semi-final performance. But Mayfield now charging towards the front. See whether he can make inroads towards the front of the field and put the fight to Ronna Falk and Tessman. Here is that battle for third between Tebow and Mayfield. Heading over the ante up double on the left-hand side. And into the option lane, the crapshoot. Tebow with the third spot, Mayfield right behind him. And how many times have we seen these two drivers battle for a major win in the United States through the five car draw, both of them going around the outside, heading into the uh, freak show section. Mayfield out of shape, heading to the dance floor. And that's gonna give Tebow a little bit of breathing room down the Las Vegas Strip. Yeah, Tebow with some breathing space now, as you said, Aaron. Mayfield in the four, Battier in five, then Boots, Cavalieri, Ongaro, Fenn, McBride, Savoya, and Lutz. That's your full running order. 1.3 seconds separates the HB Racing drivers out front between Ronnefolk and Tessman leading the way with 11 minutes down, 49 to go. And we... Tessman rolling over at the top of the hill is going to give Ronald Falk his biggest lead yet. It's now 5.4 seconds over Jared Tebow with Mayfield in third, and Tessman has dropped all the way to fourth. This is uncharted territory for the Canadian. We haven't seen him throw away great track position like this very often. Yeah, Tessman on the back foot now on the defense for his title as Ronald Falk leads away. Had a 5.4 second advantage, then 1.3 back to Mayfield, and now Tessman just eight tenths of a second down on Ryan Mayfield in the four spot. Then Battier in five, Ronna Falk in new waters for him as well, leading a world championship final out front, going through the freak show, taking the wide line to miss the bumps, and he is going to try and stretch out that gap and capitalize on Tessman's mistake. My goodness, does Ronna Falk look in control, already pulling away a 6.1 second lead over Jared Tebow, though Tebow did have a personal best last lap, 36-7. He lost time. 
In fact, over the last lap, he's lost, a, or last two laps, he's lost a full second to Ronnefalk as the Swedish driver has put his head down and started trying to pull away. 6.3 seconds is the biggest lead we've seen so far. 12 minutes and 20 seconds to the, into this one, a couple minutes away from a uh, second round of pit stops. And Ronald Falk, a new personal best lap, 36.025 ballistic. Yeah, Ronald Falk starting to really turn up the wick here to make sure he can maximize on Tessman's mistake. He pulls out a 6.9 second advantage over Jared Tebow in the three. Tessman's going back around Ryan Mayfield for the three spot now as Tebow in the two. Mayfield dropping back down to four. Tessman trying to hunt down Jared Tebow in front. 1.8 seconds a gap. Ron Falk pulling away from Tebow as Ryan Mayfield starting to catch up to Ty Tessman. He was less than a second behind the line, uh, line last time by. Have to wonder if the, oh, Mayfield with a big crash dropping down the double down. And that's going to give Tessman a little bit of breathing room. But Tessman not looking his usual self has not been blazingly fast and frankly has not been incredibly consistent either as he's slipped 1.4 seconds behind Jared Tebow for the second spot. His title defense not over but in jeopardy if he's six seconds behind the leader after 13 minutes. Yeah, Ronafalk really showing the fight at the moment. The gap between Ronafalk and Tebow, six seconds at the line last time by with 13 and a half minutes down it's Ronafalk, Tebow, Tessman, Mayfield and Boots your top five. Elliot Boots closing right up on the back of Ryan Mayfield now after that mistake from Mayfield as he came down Fremont Street we're watching the fight here between Tebow and Tessman. Tessman really putting the pressure on Tebow as they come over the poker table and on to Las Vegas Boulevard. This is something we haven't seen from Tessman looking beatable and that might give everyone else on the track the confidence they needed to challenge him and stop him from winning another world championship. We don't often have to see Ty dig himself from a hole because he's usually out front and demoralizing everybody. And right now running in third, just trying to hang on to the rear wing of Jared Tebow. His HB Racing teammate though, out front, David Ronafalk. It's another story for the young Swede. He's leading the way with a five and a half second lead. We're coming up on the second round of pit stops. No one's taken their second stop. Oh, I stand corrected as I say that. Ryan Lutz has taken his second stop. We'll start to see that come into play very soon. And Tebow and Tessman go by for pit lane one more time. Both of them pitted around 8.45. And so that would mean they could go about 16 or 17.30 before they need to come in as Elliot Boots has come in for his second stop from the fifth spot. Great split screen we have there looking at the pit lane. We can see when they're coming in and watch them get their fuel stops done. Tebow and Tessman racing each other for the two spot right now. And that's actually allowed them to pick up their pace. And they have closed the gap ever so slightly to run a folk out front. But Tebow stretching out from Tessman now. Ronald Falk into pit lane. And, and back out. out. 3.6 seconds. Oh, and Tebow able to take the lead from Ronald Falk as they headed down into Binion's horseshoe. Ronald oh, Falk to the inside as Tessman hit the hole after the Penn and Teller doubled. Tebow fights right back through the snake eye section and retakes the lead. Tessman right there waiting for the two ahead of him to stack up. Instead, oh, it's Tessman touch. and Ronald Falk that get together through the crap shoot section, and Tebow is, will retain the lead. Tebow really forced the issue on Ronald Falk through the snake eyes there. Ronald Falk had him hung out to dry, and Tebow drove it straight down to the apex and covered it off from David Ronald Falk just a few corners ago, and then forced the issue again as Tessman got in the back of Ronald Falk. They hung up on each other, and that slowed him down. Now Tebow holds a one and a half second advantage over Ronald Falk in two, Tessman in three, and Mayfield sitting behind them about eight tenths of a second down in four. Ronald Falk out of shape after the Penn and Teller doubled. Tessman thought to look to the inside, but Ronald Falk punched it, and Tessman had to hit the brakes, and that's allowed. Ryan Mayfield to catch up. So now we've got a four-way battle for the lead at the 16-minute mark. However, Ronald Falk is the only one of these four drivers that hasn't yet pitted. So if when everyone else comes into pit lane, Ronald Falk all of a sudden could have his five or six second lead back. Oh, absolutely. So Ronald Falk's probably going to be thinking about driving smart right now. Let himself clear out and just be smart about where you're putting the car. You don't want to put it on the lid and lose whatever esteemed advantage you might have when everyone else comes in for fuel. As he's done his two stops, Tebow might be stretching out that fuel strategy, though. Could be forcing a 10-minute run and extending out, maybe shorten the race by one pit stop for him. It was a 1.1 second advantage now, 1.4 for Tebow over Ronald Falk. And this is shaping up to be one of our Cinderella story uh, finale Wonderful fairy tales here. Tebow a little bit out of shape, entering into that backside rough section we've been calling the freak show. That's allowed Ronald Falk to eat away at that 1.3 second lead. It's now down to eight tenths of a second. 
Tebow through Binion's horseshoe up the high roller, trying to maintain a gap over David Ronald knowing he has to pit again, and Ronald Falk does not. Testament out of shape after the Penn and Teller double, and now Davide Angaro in fourth had to lock up, uh, excuse me, lock up the brakes not to run him over. Yeah, Ronald Falk checked up about half a lap ago going through the dance floor section and had to slow himself right down to make sure he kept it rubber side down. So some smart driving from David Runnerfolk, making sure he doesn't put it on the roof and just thinking about the longer run. Doesn't have to chase down Tebow right now because he knows Tebow has to stop for fuel as Tebow's in for fuel now. So David Runnerfolk is going to resume the lead. We'll see where Tebow comes out. Reese Heard grabbing the car. Joe Pillar sticking the fuel gun in it and back out. Testing in for fuel as well. Good stop for Tebow, 4.1. Still half a second slower than what Ronald had, and those half seconds add up on the track. Tebow and Boots getting together in the center of the track as Elliott hasn't come in, or has come in for his second pit stop, but it was early as well. And as Tebow came out of pit lane, Ryan Mayfield was right there and just sent it in up the inside. Did the old block pass on Tebow, says, no, mate, this is my corner. And now Mayfield goes to the two-spot testman all the way down in five after that pit stop. And 3.6 seconds separated Ron Falk from Mayfield at the line last time by, or at the end, of, beginning of sector three. Now it's 3.2 seconds. Mayfield had a 35.787 best uh, personal best lap for him. Only one of four, five drivers in the 35-second lap range. Tebow to the inside of Elliott Boots, and Boots just had to let him go because Tebow had the position. Absolutely doesn't want to fight him. Someone stopping there at the crapshoot. I think that's Kyle McBride just letting the faster cars go by as McBride drops all the way down to 12, so not the oh, final. Oh, Boots out of shape. Boots up on the pipe there, and Tebow had to stop on the brakes to let him go, and that's going to give Mayfield breathing room and maybe allow him to start trying to track down uh, David Ronafalk, though he did just give up 1.3 seconds to the leader. Now it's a four and a half second lead for David Ronafalk. Yeah, Ronafalk really stretching out that gap. That's pit strategy and just being smart, driving with the rest of them for those few laps while he waited for them to pit. Seems to be paying off for the Swede. Mayfield into the two spot. He's got a one second advantage over Elliot Boots, who comes through for three. Tebow into four, 1.6 seconds down. Then 1.1 back to Ty Tessman in the five. Then Battier, Ongaro, Cavalieri, Savoya, Lutz, Bend, and McBride. Still full running order. All 12 cars still running at this stage. We're almost at one third race distance, the 20 minute mark. You see Jared Tebow absolutely driving at the limit through every section of the track. Small bobbles here and there, masked by the fact that he's keeping the trigger clamped. Over the high roller and to the Penn and Teller double. Goes way to the inside of the uh, gigantic crater that's forming after it. Up over the left side, step up, jump into the crapshoot section. He's trying to keep Ryan Mayfield in his sights as he was 1.8 seconds behind him at the end of sector number one. The end of sector two, Tebow is now 1.6 seconds behind, so losing tenths here and there. Meanwhile, Ryan Mayfield is closed within seven tenths of Elliott Boots to try to make this a battle for second. They head into Binion's horseshoe and up to the high roller. Mayfield and Boots duking it out as they come across the Penn and Teller double. Mayfield jumping straight into the hole, got really buck wild trying to catch the car. Tebow did the same as well. Tessman still sitting back there in five. Doesn't really show the pace at this stage, although he did drop a 36-2 last lap by. Fastest on track is David Ronnefalk with the 35-7. Wow, personal best lap for Ronnefalk last time by the leader keeping the hammer down. Jared Tebow, Ty Tessman, new personal best laps for them on this time by. David Ronald Falk's lead, 6.3 seconds because he's been so consistent. Yes, he's got the fast laps, but he hasn't had the bobbles. Out front in the yellow, orange, white, and green HB racing buggy, heading into the crap shoot, sh shoot section along the back, up and down from the Hoover Dam. Ronald Falk's last lap at 35.895. 6.1 seconds ahead of Elliott Boots, European drivers one and two. Yeah, Ronald Falk leading out from Boots. Mayfield dropping off the back of Boots now. 2.6 seconds between Boots and Mayfield. Don't count out Ryan Mayfield in the late stages of the run. He just has something special towards the end of the 60-minute oh, race. Oh, Tebow to the inside of Ryan Mayfield coming on the straightaway, but Mayfield had a run coming onto the Las Vegas Strip and able to clear Tebow before Binion's horseshoe. Then Tebow in the four, Tessman in five. Tessman, eight tenths of a second down on this battle. Last time at the line, only one tenth of a second separating Mayfield and Tebow as they come over the anti-up section. Mayfield just catching the pipe a little bit. Oh, someone on their roof there. Boots on his roof. He's going to drop down. Now Mayfield, oh, Mayfield tips it over on the ruts in the Hoover Dam section. Tebow going to go to the two. Boots to three. Tessman in four. Mayfield dropping all the way down to five. Crazy couple of corners. 
and an HB racing car disappearing, but it's not who we thought it would be. David Ronnefalk from third on the grid, 11.3 seconds up on Jared Tebow as Elliott Boots into pit lane. Boots in and out of pit lane, capitalizing on that mistake he had. He now drops to the four spot at the line, but he is going to come out behind the battle ahead of him. That's Boots' third stop. He seems to be the one that's pitting early for everyone as the third round of pit stops coming up very shortly. We're going to see whether David Ronnefort can try and stretch it out in the pit lane once again and add to his 11-second lead that he has in hand over Jared Tebow at the moment, sitting in the two, and his HB Racing teammate, Ty Tessman, defending world champ, sitting in the three spot, just eight tenths of a second behind. David Ronnefort in pit lane right on time, 22.30, in and out with the lead and a four-second fuel stop. Fastest of the top three here on round number two. And back out in the lead, we'll see what his gap is as they head by sector number one. 5.1 seconds over his teammate, Ty Tessman. And Tessman will still need to pit for a third time. Ronald Falk with a nice, comfortable lead now ahead of his HB teammate, Tessman. Tebow sitting there in the three. He hasn't taken his third stop either. In fact, neither or none of the top five have, barring Ronald Falk, of course, with a 5.1 second lead and 0.6 of a second back to Tebow in the three. Then two seconds back to Mayfield in four. 1.5 back to Cavalieri now into the five. Ryan Cavalieri making inroads on the top five. Don't count him out towards the later stage of the run. He had to start from pit lane, making big gains and now buying into the top five. David Ronapak with a 5.2 second advantage on Tessman. This one could come down to fuel mileage. If Tessman realized we thought these drivers might be making a game time decision as the race goes on, see what develops and determine what they're going to try to do for a pit interval. If Tessman can stretch out the fuel over what Rana Falk is capable of and Tessman can eliminate a pit stop from what Rana Falk is doing, that's the difference there. 5.1 seconds. Tessman could blow by Rana Falk and never have to see him if they're on a different pit strategy. Absolutely, but he has to keep it rubber side down pointing forward. One mistake, you let that gap blow out to eight seconds. Boom, not happening for Ty nope. Tessman. It's going to be close. It's going to be interesting to see in the closing stages of this race. We're almost 25 minutes down at about 35, 40 to go right now. Tessman in the two spot, 2.9 seconds down on Ronafok because Ronafok had a slow lap last time by. So Tessman closing the gap a little bit right now, but Ronafok seems unfazed. You see it, you say a slow time last time by for Ronafok. And Tessman had only picked up two tenths this time by, though. He cut off 2.3 seconds from the lead. It's to 2.8. And Tessman, wow, into the hole hard after the Penn and Teller double. Tessman having to chase down somebody for the first time. And the fact that it's his teammate, I'm sure, is not lost on him. He knows that he's got to go get the driver that just two years ago was not sit, uh, pitting under the same tent. So Tessman knows he's got to track down Ty Tessman or I'm sorry, track down David Ronafalk and pass him if he wants to make history. Yeah, Tessman with all the work to do in this one. The gap now, 3.6 seconds as Ronafalk responded to the slow lap just a moment ago. Whoa. Drops a 36-3, breaks away that gap from Ty Tessman, his HP teammate. Oh, and Tessman getting it wrong over the Penn and Teller double. Lucky, lucky break. Roll. Oh, yeah, lucky break from Tessman there. And that's what I was talking about. One rollover, you have to get marshed with you, cost yourself three, four, five seconds. Boom, that gap is gone, and you have no chance of catching him anymore for Ty Tessman. Rana Falk responded after losing all that time, made up one, uh, eight tenths of a second on that last lap, trying to maintain that five second cushion as Ryan Cavallari has moved all the way up to fourth. He is only 2.2 seconds behind Jared Tebow, the 2014 runner up, fighting toward a podium finish here already, not even halfway done. Cavalieri coming down Las Vegas Boulevard now, running in the four spot. He's got Robert Battier with him for company in the five. They come through the high roller over the Penn and Teller double. Cavalieri jumping into the hole, bouncing out. Robert Battier is right there with him, trying to put pressure on for a top five result. Currently running four and five on the road. They've got a bit of a gap back, just eight tenths of a second back to David Ongaro, the young Italian driver, and Robert Battier's young protege. You can see him coming down Fremont Street behind them as they head into the five card draw. Where does the Ryan Cavalieri train stop? He knew he was going to be fired up after being told to start from pit lane. He was already fired up after getting uh, docked one second for an inside pass at the end of his semifinal. And that's when Ryan Cavalieri is at his most dangerous, when he's got a chip, a chip on his shoulder and a reason to put uh, prove everybody wrong. He's already fought from 12th on lap number one to fifth. He's within... I mean, what, seven seconds of the race lead? 8.2 seconds out of the lead behind David Ronafalk. 
as we follow along here with the Swedish driver up over the high roller section into the Penn and Teller double. If there's anyone to stop Ronald Falk, could it be Ryan Cavallari? Well, if Cavalier can march forward and get a move on towards the front, he's got to start dropping the hammer now because we're approaching halfway race distance and Cavalier is simply and frankly running out of time. The David Ronafalk working through the right side of the track around the freak show, the dance floor, up and over the hangover and the table, and we're going to send it down to Gary Trackside. Here we are right here. comes David Ronafalk. His car looks really good off the straightaway. Up over the high roller, kind of sending it sideways. Sets up for that fadeaway double. A little bit loose and slideways, goes wide around the bumps. You can see that racing line right there in the middle of this step up. You can see the racing line is actually only a couple feet wide. David Ronafalk down Fremont Street and into the five car draw. Had a 14 second cushion on new second place driver Robert Batye as looks like Batye made his way past Ty Tessman two laps ago. Yeah, Batye seemingly out of nowhere was running down in the five spot just a couple of laps ago, but everyone else pitted in front of him. Now Robert Batye up to the two spot, the 2012 world champ making a march towards the front. He's only 4.1 seconds down on our race leader, David Ronafalk, as Ty Tessman slips behind, one second behind Batye last time on the line. Tebow in four, Boots in five, Cavalieri now in six, and he's seven and a half seconds off the lead. Incredible pace so far for David Ronafalk. A 13 point out of, sorry, 4.2 second advantage on Robert Batye. Dropping down on the, uh, Batye dropping on the Fremont Street has defending champion Ty Tessman behind him. The only two former FR World Champions to make the final this year. Tessman and Batye up over the poker table and onto the straightaway. Tessman running a second and a half behind Batye. Would love to get back into the two spot, but with Ronafalk stretching out what's now a 13.9 second lead, he can pin again. Boots in and out of pit. Yeah, Boots takes his fourth pit stop at about the 29 minute mark, so we'll see everyone else come through at around 30 and 31 for their fourth stop for this A final. Boots running in P4 when he came into pit, now dropping all the way down to eighth. There's only a couple of guys who are off the lead lap. Everyone else lapping within 20 seconds of the lead. It's still close out front. Anything can still happen. David Ronafalk has been able to open up these incredible gaps over his teammate Ty Tessman. Still trying to get a full pit stops distance away, knowing that he will likely have to pit one time more than his HB Racing teammate, Ty Tessman. And at the 30-30 mark, the running order looks like this as Ronna Falk into pit lane. Ty Tessman running second, Robert Batye third, Ryan Cavallari fourth, Jared Tebow rounds out the top five. And Rangaro sixth, Boot seventh, Mayfield eighth, Savoya ninth, and Lutz tenth. Ben and McBride round out the running order. Ryan Mayfield drifting wide through the freak show section. Yeah, Ronna Falk's gotta get a move on if he wants to save that pit stop. But at the halfway race distance point, he had about a six and a half second lead over his HB Racing teammate. It's going to be a different story now as he's come in for his fourth pit stop and Tessman's still yet to stop for number four as uh, Boots has also taken his fourth. Ronald Falk, not quite the same fuel economy as Tessman out front. We're following along with Boots and Mayfield currently battling it out for seventh and eighth on the road. It's pretty crazy out here and with a couple of mistakes, you can easily drop from a top five to tenth. And though David Ronafalk, as you said, was able to come in for his fourth fuel stop and still maintaining a 10.6 second lead on Ty Tessman. This one's turning into a bloodbath. As Ronafalk just running away, disappearing into the night here on a Las Vegas Saturday evening. Boots and Mayfield getting together. Boots rolling over after the Penn and Teller double. Mayfield goes by. That is for the seventh spot. That's not where you'd imagine these two champions would be battling. Well, in a field as tough as this, anything can happen. And some days, it just doesn't all go your way. But the man who has it all in his favor right now, David Ronafalk, he has a pit stop in hand, but only just over his HP Racing teammate, Ty Tessman, in the two spot. 11.1 seconds a gap between the two. Now five seconds further back to Ryan Cavalieri in the three spot. As Mayfield comes in and out for fuel, we'll check the time as he comes out. 3.9 seconds pit stop for Mayfield, running in P7 at the moment. A solid stop for the team. Oh, Mayfield getting it wrong, though, heading up over the high roller as Robert Batye 
Something potentially wrong with Batya's car. Looks like maybe the left front broken. His car looked wounded. Oh, maybe okay. It looked broken heading through that high roller section. That's what stacked up everybody allowed, uh, caused Ryan Mayfield to crash. Good view from our HRP track cam up the top of the Hoover Dam. Not sure what's going on there with Batye and Mayfield. That's the battle for the seventh spot. Mayfield's car jumping way up in the air, heading to the dance floor section as he disappeared and then shot out of one of the holes in the freak show. The gap between runner fall contestment is actually only 1.8 seconds. That timing screen tricking us ah. with uh, this little delay thing it's got going. So it's only 1.8 seconds between Ronald Falk and Tessman, but Tessman still has not taken pit stop number four just yet. So Tessman, when he takes pit stop number four, will lose probably around eight or nine seconds, and it might mean Ronald Falk might just have enough in hand to stay out in front of his teammate in the two spot. We go back another 6.9 seconds Further back to Jared Tebow in the three, then Cavalieri and Ongaro rounding out your top five. We could be waiting another two years for a second chance at, or for another chance at a two-time champion of the world with David Ronafalk starting to run away. We don't know if anyone, let alone Ty Tessman, is going to have a chance to catch him. We'll have to see the HB Racing teammates running out front, but does one have anything for the other? Oh! Big crash coming on the straightaway. Getting caught up on the marshal's foot. Like, that's a rookie error right there, running out in front Man. of a car. Especially for the world's A main. Yeah, you don't want to be the uh, the catalyst to affect a world's result. But the marshal just causing Tebow and Cavalieri to check up and flip over. Luckily, they landed on all fours and back on their way. Got a team associate instant replay of the carnage. Someone flipping over on the straightaway. Turn Marshall running out to get it. Oh, he yeah. He gets both of them. Wow. Cav and Tebow. No, I think it was Tebow that flipped, and he got Ongaro and Cav in the one go. Oh, man. Well, I guess no one got an advantage out of it. Nope. Ronald Falk with a 3.6 second advantage over Ty Tessman now. Tessman still yet to stop for his fourth pit stop of the race, where 30... Four minutes and 30 seconds in with 25.30 remaining. Starting to draw towards the final one-third of racing distance in our World Championship A main. Ronafok leading out from Tessman. Ongaro to the three spot now. Cavalieri in four and Tebow in five. Ongaro, Cavalieri and Tebow still battling it out for three, four and five at the moment. Here is Tebow and Cavalieri, two very successful United States racers. Battling here for a fourth place spot here in this uh, last half of the FMR World Championships. Cavalieri looking to the inside in the crap shoot section. Couldn't make it happen. Tebow a little squirrely at the end of Fremont Street. Cavalieri looked to the inside. Not enough room to make anything happen there. Cavalieri with a mistake. Gets a lucky bounce. They call that pudge luck. Oh, but Cavalieri getting it wrong again at the end of the section. That's going to allow Robert Batye to get by. So Cavalieri dropping from fifth to seventh as actually Batye up to fifth, Mayfield to sixth, Boots to seventh, Cavalieri to eighth, and into pit lane. Yeah, a bit of a shocker lap there from Ryan Cavalieri. He's going to come back out, rejoining all the way down in P8. David Ongaro capitalizing on the carnage happening around in the last couple of laps, goes through to P3 at the moment. It's all still switching and swapping out on track. Ronald Folk leading out from Tessman, Ongaro, Batye, and Mayfield, your top five right now. Cavalieri dropping all the way down to P8. We've got 24 minutes left of racing. The gap between Ronafolk and Tessman as we're waiting for. Oh, I can't tell, actually. Yep. It's, it's about three seconds, I'd say. David Ronafolk over the Penn and Teller double and through the Snake Eyes section, getting around a little bit of traffic and heading to the back left side of the course into the crapshoot section, taking it very conservatively now, not jumping into the hole, instead landing short and driving through it, and still going very quickly. 36.3 that last time by, made up a full second on his teammate, Ty Tessman, stretching out, trying to get a full pit stop. Oh, crashing, coming onto the front straightaway. That's Ronald Falk losing out, and I think Tessman is gonna close up the gap now. Ronald Falk took the line, 
That was ahead. Tebow that got by. That was. Tessman's not much further off the back now. No, he's way back. We've got a team associated instant replay. Here's Ronald Follett coming over the poker table. Just drops it down. Oh, man, just unlucky. Puts it on the outside tires, and over she goes. Did not have room to save it. He would have driven completely out of the pit lane as well. Inevitably rolling it over. Turn Marshall right there and able to resume the lead. Boots with a spectacular crash after the Penn and Teller double, able to get back on his four tires as well. David Ronafalk disappearing into the night here in Las Vegas, pulling away from Ty Tessman and the rest of the field. Could very well be an HB racing driver who climbs atop the podium, but not the one we might have expected coming into this race, not the defending champion. David Ronafalk trying to become yet another first time winner at the FMR Worlds. And Maurizio Monesi's world championship record from 1994 may live for another two years. Absolutely, and Runner Falk's ticking all the boxes right now, holding on to the lead out front with a 6.8 second gap. Back to Tessman in the two spot, Ongaro in three, with a 1.5 second gap between Tessman and Ongaro. So David Ongaro looking to close the back gap further forward to Ty Tessman in the two spot. Mayfield in four, then Battier now into the five spot, Ryan Cavalieri in six, then Savoya, Thibaut, Boots, Lutz, McBride, and Fenn. Your full running order right now. 21 minutes left on the clock. And we should be able to get an accurate idea now of just how far Ty Tessman is behind when he comes by the line here. 21 seconds. Rana Falk and Tessman out front, Angaro, Davide Angaro, the young Italian, surprising in practice, consistent in qualifying, could be looking at a podium finish here, was just 1.9 seconds up on. David Rana Falk had a spin out, cost himself a little bit of time. We managed to get it pointed the right direction and back on his way as we follow Ronna Falk across the dance floor, kicking hard over the hangover onto Las Vegas Boulevard, still leading out by around about 20 seconds, leading over David Ongaro into the two spot now. The young Italian sensation absolutely killing it out here in Las Vegas. They hit a tight testament in the three. There's the, I don't know what's a bigger surprise, Ronna Falk getting out front and being so darn consistent. Or Davide Ongaro racing from fourth on the grid into second, passing the defending champion and potentially looking at a runner-up finish here at the World Championships. Incredible storylines developing in the final 20, heading into the final 20 minutes of the World Championship final. Tessman in the three, then Battier, Mayfield, Cavalieri, Thibaut, Boots, Savoya, Lutz, Fenn and McBride inside the final 20 minutes of racing. Less than one third of race distance still to go and Ronald Falk has been leading for over 25, 30 minutes now and still stretching out that gap over David Ongaro in the two spot. And he's got more than a pit stop gap back to second. So even if he does have to pit an extra time over what anybody else is doing, it's not going to matter as Davide Angaro up over the high roller to the Penn and Teller double and around the snake eyes section. Angaro looks smooth and consistent, has been all week long, has had both speed and the resolve to keep that MBX 7R moving forward. The young Italian trying to make his way to the podium here at the World Championships. What a story that would be for the young man from Italy, Cecile, Italy. 
There was a lot of talk before this event, knowing that the blown out rudder conditions would possibly help the European drivers. It seems to be that way, because currently we're being led out by a Swedish driver ahead of an Italian, uh, the Canadian of Ty Tessman, and the Spaniard of Robert Battier. So four different nationalities, five different nationalities across the top five drivers in our buggy main right now. Oh, and Battier, I'm sorry, Tessman and Ungaro got together as Ungaro had a couple of rough corners, allowed Tessman to close the gap, and then uh, Garo spun out in front of Tessman. Tessman sort of just pushed him out of the way and took off. Batye got by as well. So Angaro now slipping to the fourth spot as Tessman and Batye in second and third. And now let's see if Tessman has the pace to run down his teammate. They're running very similar platforms, different engines, different tires. Let's see what happens. We still got 17 minutes left. Well and truly, Tessman has a lot of work to do to close the gap to David Runnerfolk as the gap is starting to increase even further for David Ronafolk out front. Tessman, Batia and Ongaro all very close indeed. Less than two seconds covering second, third and fourth on the road. I don't think we've seen the last of Robert Batia or David Ongaro yet to challenge Ty Tessman for second on the road at the moment. Tessman was the runner up in 2012 when Robert Batia took the title. Now it's Tessman leading Batia by 1.3 as he tries to chase down David Ronafalk. He was 25 seconds behind at the line last time by over a half a lap gap to his HB Racing teammate. So even if Ronafalk does have to stop one more extra time than Tessman, it would still only be about a 15 Whoa. second lead. Mayfield with a donut exit in the snake eyes caught up on the pipe and had to get marshaled and that he was down in the seven. I don't think it's going to affect his current position, but losing out a bunch of time on that one as well. Yeah, Mayfield and TLR teammate, Reno Savoya, seventh and eighth, and another TLR teammate in 11th. As Mayfield kicking up onto the dance floor section, wheeling through the hangover. Not the world championship final he was looking for, certainly. And this will be the first time since 2008. Uh, 2000, well, I mean, he led in 2008, led in 2010, led in 2012, led in 2014, has not yet led a lap here, and with Ronald Falk disappearing out front, may never get the chance. Yeah, right now it's lo looking lights out for David Ronald Falk out front with 15.45 left on the clock. Robert Battier goes to the two spot ahead of Ty Tessman. The Battier, like I said, starting to come back into the fray, put the pressure on the Canadian for the two spot. David Ongaro only 1.1 seconds behind Tessman, in the four, and Cavalieri about eight seconds down on this battle in five. Ooh, Mayfield uh, heading into Binion's horseshoe as Cavalieri was coming out of pit lane, and they got really close together as was now shaped up, I believe, to be a battle for sixth as Tebow should have moved up to the top five. 44, 40, uh, 44.50 left to go. 44.50 down, sorry, 15.10 left to go. Two more pit stops for most of these drivers. Potentially one for Ty Tessman. That's true. But whether that's enough to mean he's closer to David Ronafalk, I don't think it is, as Ronafalk is checking it out hard, stretching out that gap well and truly as he comes in and out for stop number six for Ronafalk. So he's going to take one more in about seven or eight minutes' time to splash it off and bring home a world championship for David Ronafalk, currently leading out from Robert Battier into David Ongaro in three Tessman now down to the four. Mayfield and Cavalieri battling it out for five and six on the road. The fat lady hasn't sung yet, but she has started putting on her dress. Rana Falk has been absolutely lights out since he got into the lead and started pulling away. A absolute machine here in this very rough, very dry, very blown out, very real off-road RC tracks the Las Vegas course. Whoa. And Rana Falk commanding it better than anybody behind the wheel of the HB Racing D815 V2 with Team Orion Power, a.k.a. Tires. This would be, if he can finish up here, a.k.a.'s second world championship after 2010. With Cody King yes, taking sir. the win in 2010. Rana Falk, though, leading out. And this could be sweet redemption for the Swede after a horrific end to his Euros campaign while leading. A servo failure brought him undone, and the heartbreak on Whoa, his face Whoa, someone off the track. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah. 
Not sure who that was. It was falling behind Ty Tessman there. I don't believe, oh, I think it was Robert Batye. So Batye from fourth flying off the track, and that's going to allow Ty Tessman to focus ahead as he tries to track down Davide Angaro and get back to the second spot. Not what Batye wanted, trying to chase down Ty Tessman ahead. Now he's 4.2 seconds down off the back of Tessman in the three, who's chasing David Ongaro ahead of him. 2.2 seconds, a gap between those two. As Rana Falk still leading the way from Ongaro, Tessman, Badier, Mayfield and Cavalieri, then Thibaut, Savoya, Boots, Lutz, Fend and McBride with 12 minutes 45 left on the clock. Starting to come down to the final 10 minutes of our World Championship A main here at RC Tracks Las Vegas. David Ronafalk, every lap trying to maintain the advantage. Last lap, he lost 1.3 seconds. The lap before, he lost a tenth of a second. The lap before that, he pitted. He gave up six seconds. Before that, he lost two seconds. But before that, Angaro had given up five seconds, and that's what's allowed Ronafalk to maintain this advantage. The young Italian not quite fast enough to cut away time in chunks. With 12 minutes left to go, Angaro and Tessman are running out of time to run down Ronafalk. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to have anything for Ronafalk towards the end of this race. He's just been too quick for too long, stretching out that gap. It's too much to overcome for anyone out there at the moment as Ronafalk holds on to a huge lead over Angaro in the two, Tessman in three. The battle four seconds shaping up over the Penn and Teller double. Tessman starting to reel in Angaro very quick at the end of the Penn and Teller double through the snake eyes and the Annie up step up. Tessman trying to track down Angaro and get by him would be his third straight podium finish at the World Championships. Not, of course, the result he's absolutely looking for, but trying to get every position possible with 11.30 left to go. Rona Falk with about a 15 second lead over Ongaro in the two in Tessman in three. Just eight tenths of a second down on Ongaro as we follow them coming through Binion's horseshoe over the high roller now. Ongaro from Tessman over the Penn and Teller double. Tessman right up on the back of David Ongaro. They come over the ante up. Ongaro using the wide line cutting across the top of the jump. Now into the crap shoot. Oh, Tessman clipping the pipe into the crap shoot gets on stuck. Luckily keeps it rubber side down. Just loses a few car lengths from the back of David Ongaro. Now into the five car draw, chasing him down again. Angaro trying to maintain his composure with the former, uh, the defending world champion ahead of him. Just as I said, Angaro off the track after the poker table gets back onto the straightaway. But fortunately, before Tessman could get there, but Angaro perhaps showing a little chip in the armor. He crashes again after the Penn and Teller double, trying to muscle his way back by, but Tessman forces the issue and gets up to the second spot. This battle still raging on for second and third now. Starting to really heat up. Tessman knows he's got to get a move on if he has any chance of catching David Ronafalk out front. There's a 16-second lead for Ronafalk. Tessman's got to get eyes forward and start really dropping the fast laps if he wants a chance to defend his world title. But I personally think it's too much to gain with 10 minutes left on the clock. Yep, just about 16 seconds with 10 minutes left to go. Even if Ronafalk has to pit an extra time, which... And I think they're both going to have to pit one more time, so that's going to be even. Tessman's last pit at 44.11. Ronopog's last pit at 45.01, so both of them are going to have to pit one last time. Angaro trying to race his way past Tessman, and he does down Fremont Street. So the battle for second is only going to help Ronopog even further stretch out his lead. Angaro trying to hang on. You heard the Italian crowd in the background go nuts when he made it by. Everyone here cheering for a great battle for the second spot as there isn't one for the lead. Rana Falk is gone. Absolutely checked Whoa, out. Whoa, Angaro with a mistake through the empty pockets. He drives back into it, tries to go to the outside move on Tessman, but the Canadian Ty Tessman says, nope, not today. I will take back the inside, and you've got to do it all again, young fella from Italy. Ooh. Bouncing into that hole at the Hoover Dam section, getting super loose as they come onto Fremont Street. Now Ongaro trying to chase down Tessman through the five-car draw, bouncing through the freak show, and Tessman holds down the two-spot with about a 1.5-second advantage, I'd say, as they take the line. 1.2 seconds between Tessman and Ongaro with 8 minutes 45 left on the clock. 17.3 seconds separates the top two with 8 minutes and 44 seconds left to go. That is massive. David Ronafalk just needs to keep it rubber side down at this point. There's nothing Ronald Falk, uh, I'm sorry, that Tessman could do 
They're working on lap number 82 of 96. Even if he picked up one second per lap remaining, he still wouldn't catch him. No, absolutely not. As Ronald Falk is still trying to stretch out his lead. Since he got to the front, he just had eyes forward, not looking back, head down, and he's well and truly on his way to claiming his maiden world championship win here. But he's got to bring it home yet with eight minutes left on the clock. Tessman trying to chase him down. Robert Bassier now to the three spot as Ongaro has a slow lap of 43-1 last time by. Falls down to four. Tebow 4.1 seconds down in the five. And then Cavalieri, Mayfield, Savoya, Lutz, Boots, Fend and McBride. 7.45 left on the clock. Robert Falk's last lap, a 36.5. That's still faster than some of the other drivers have done for their best laps. And continuing to maintain that advantage, still 13 seconds over Ty Tessman this last lap. Tessman only picked up two tenths. Before that, Ron Falk actually gave up five seconds as he came in for a pit stop. But he's, Tessman's going to need more than that. Yeah, I don't think Tessman has anything left in the tank to take the fight to Ronald Falk out front. And Ronald Falk's not leaving anything on the table. It's not like he's gone into cruise control or anything. He's still circulating as fast as he can, Boy. not focusing on the gap at all as he comes out of pit lane for stop number seven and rejoins with lapping traffic. The traffic thinks better of racing with him and gives him room. So plenty of sportsmanship from Ryan Mayfield there giving Ronald Falk room. That was one of the remaining hurdles between Ronald Falk and his first world championship. His final pit stop is done. And with a full tank of fuel, he's clear toward the finish. David Ronald Falk through the five car draw across the dance floor and to the poker table section onto the straightaway. We're gonna send it to Gary. Here comes David Ronald Falk down the straightaway. He's just a few moments away from his world championship if everything holds together over the double goes to the inside misses that hole david ron and fox car has been working awesome he's got his commanding ron and falk in control of this one with six minutes ten left on the clock he's still stretching out that gap to tie testman in the two spot robert battier the 2012 world champ in the three Tebow in four, Cavalieri in five, David Ongaro falling right off a 59.8 lap time last time by. Unfortunately for him, he had a long pit stop, a 22.3 second pit stop. He's dropping down all the way to P7. The young Italian not having a great run in the last, late stages of this one. Tebow and Cavalieri battling out for four and five still. Tessman and Batye, the last two world champions, could be second and third on the podium as David Ronafalk would grab his first world championship to add to a collection of European and Swedish championship titles. He won't need his hotel room tonight. He's gonna be out partying the whole time, so he went up to the front desk, dropped off his room key, and checked out. That was a long setup. Uh-huh. But worth it, as Ronafalk is absolutely in control right now. Five minutes left on the clock and it's all for David Ronafalk to take. He can drop it into cruise control, just bring it home, don't take any risks, don't break it, and you will be crowned world champion ahead of Ty Tessman and Robert Battier in the three. Battier, 4.1 seconds down on Tessman, so not looking like a challenge for second at the moment as everyone's starting to spread themselves out. Going back to some of those keys of the race we talked about at the beginning, be mindful of the holes. Ron Falk's done a masterful job of going around the holes that he can and blitzing through the ones that he could not avoid. He nailed his pit stops, even though he had to make one extra from his HB Racing teammate. He took advantage of getting out in front of traffic and disappeared into the nighttime, nailing this 60-minute main event, and he's four minutes away from the biggest title of his life. Absolutely, this would be a career maker for the young Swedish driver. As we're four minutes away now, Tessman in two, Battier in three, then Thibaut, Cavalieri, Savoya, Mayfield, Ongaro down to eight, Lutz, Boots, Fend and McBride is your full running order with 3.50 left on the clock. We're following David Runnefolk into the crapshoot, jumps it straight into the hole, nicely done from Runnefolk. Go on the tight line and then wide on the exit through the Hoover Dam, down Fremont Street, the double left-hander into the five-car draw, going the double single double double option to go wide around the freak show chop across the dance floor just catches himself up on the pipe 
And now on to Las Vegas Boulevard. Jumps straight into the hole on Vegas Boulevard and slowed himself down a little bit. And you've got to be careful with that one. You go in a little bit too quick. You grab the tyre and boom, on your roof straight away. David Ronald Falk has minimized those mistakes better than anybody here. Keeping the HB Racing D815 rubber side down. The AKA is in contact with the dirt here at the RC tracks of Las Vegas. Plugging away, putting in the laps, stretching out the mileage when he can. And more importantly, got himself out front without having to worry about pressure from behind. Simply focusing on the job at hand, putting away this 60 minute final and the crowd starting to get into it as Ron Falk is less than three minutes away from the World Championship. The crowd around the fence line here at RC Tracks Las Vegas egging on David Ron Falk, the Swede currently leading out and looking to take his maiden world title. You can see him in the grandstands. They're cheering him on. They're loving it. Egging on the Swedish driver to come home in the next two and a half minutes and bring home his maiden world championship ahead of Robert Battier going back to the two spot ahead of right. Ty Tessman in three. Thibaut and Cavalieri in four and five. With 2.20 left on the clock though, Ronna Falk down Las Vegas Boulevard still stretching out that gap from Battier in the two and Tessman in three. Absolutely lights out for the Swede. There's nothing more that he needs to do. He's been leading since about five minutes into this final, and he is gone. Hoping that the HB Racing crew has started booking an extra plane ticket for him to take that big trophy home to Sweden, because with a minute 50 left to go, it's going to take an absolute disaster for Ronald Falk not to walk away with this one. Robert Batye running second is way too far behind, 20 seconds with a minute 40 left to go. Getting right down to the very closing stages of our main world championship final here. Ronald Falk just jumping and sliding down the ramp in the Penn and Teller double into the empty pockets. Now over the ante up and across into the crap shoot. Jumping short on the crap shoot, actually, just keeping it nice and level, not taking too many risks. You can see Ronna Falk just cruising around. He's not getting too sideways, not pushing too hard, just doing a fine job out front. Doesn't need to push hard. He's got a huge gap behind him for the lead, and he's really capitalizing on it right now. The battle for a second starting to shape up a bit as Batye and Tessman with a minute to go, trying to compete for that second spot on the podium as Ronna Falk is out of reach. Batye and Tessman were about two seconds apart. Ronna Falk dropping into Fremont Street. Ronna Falk through the five car draw right now. Uh, still going the wide line around the freak show, nice and sideways, just to get it rotated down into the dance floor. The HB buggy super flat over the hangover. There's 2.8 seconds separating second and third. That's Batier and Tessman. Currently it's HB from Mugen, from HB and Kyosho, and then the AE in five, Mugen in six, TLR in seven, TLR in eight, Techno in nine, Kyosho in 10, TLR in 11, and AE in 12. As time is expired, David Runnerfolk through the five car draw, now up into the freak show, taking the wide line for the final time onto the dance floor. The 2016. Oh, oh and just for good measure, he flips it over. And the 2016. Oh, we'll off wait the for track. Him. 2016 If Bar Nitro Off Road World Champion, right, David Runnerfolk. And you can see the Incredible. excitement on the stand. He's 60, absolutely pumped. 60 minutes, lights out. The Swedish driver wins the oh, World Championship, championship. giving Cody King a former world champion. Giving him a great big hug. Here comes Dallas Matiasen. Elliot Boots coming over to congratulate him. Everybody trying to give David Ronnefock a big hug here. David Ronald getting congratulations from everybody there, including HB Racing teammate Ty Tessman. And look at that amazing trophy. David Ronald 2016 IFMAR World Champion here at the RC Tracks Las Vegas. An incredible 
wonderful race from the Swedish driver, David Ronnefalk, adding the world championship to a list of European titles. Truly amazing feat. And, in, and, and we're going to send up to the driver's stand with Gary Guest for an David, interview. David, awesome run. Here comes Adrian Bertine. Oh, they're both crying. Oh, man, what a moment for them. They worked hard to get here. David, awesome run. Congratulations. What do you have to say to everybody? I don't know what to say really now. Um, yeah, I'm super, yeah, super happy. I can't even tell you how happy I am. Um, yeah, we've been working so hard for this this year, and it finally came together. Everything at one, the right point. Uh, we've had some uh, bad luck this year, um, but yeah, today was just my day, and yeah, I had a really good feeling waking up this morning, and uh, yeah, I'm so happy. Can't, yeah. We're very proud of you. Congratulations, David. I bet, and you speaking of your bad luck earlier this year, that's all gone. You're world champion now. What was going through your mind when you had that big old lead? And you were you worried? Oh man, I just want to make sure my car makes it. Yeah, of course. I mean, towards the end, I was taking it super easy. I um, it also helped to have them battling for the second spot in behind me. So, yeah, I knew also the tires were on the edge, and nobody was really gonna could I, could catch me uh, so yeah as long as I kept my car on the wheels and together I knew it was gonna be tough for them to, to catch up and yeah I'm just yeah, nowhere so happy <laughs> what tires did you end up running uh, double down uh, soft compound double down soft you want to say anything to the world right now to anybody back home or anything yeah I mean hey allihopa där hemma jag är sjukt glad tack för att ni har kollat supporta allting och ja det här är med er det här är med jag firar detta och jag är så jävla glad just nu tack så jävla mycket allihopa Thank you, David. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you, Aaron. David Runnefalk, the 2016 IFMA 18th Nitro Off-Road World Champion being crowned here in Las Vegas. And what a fantastic way to finish off what has been a long week here in Vegas with the Swede taking the win over 14 and a half seconds ahead of Robert Battiai in the two spot. Ty Tessman, the defending world champ, coming home third. Then Thibaut in fourth. Ryan Cavalieri coming home in fifth. David Ongaro, the young Italian sensation, coming home in sixth. Renault Savoya coming home in seventh. Ryan Mayfield in eighth. Ryan Lutz finishing in ninth. Elliot Boots finishing up in tenth. Dakota Fend in eleventh. And Kyle McBride finishing in twelfth. All drivers who started the main... Finish the main, no retirements, a solid final to decide the world championship here. And great imagery there of Ronnefog hoisting up his world championship trophy to the adoring crowd behind the driver's stand. Everyone giving their hand of applause. We're going to go back to Gary Guest on the driver's stand. The crowd gathering there. We didn't get a chance to grab Gary on the stand. Everyone at the bottom of the stand there congratulating your new world champion, Ronnefolk. The emotion flies here in Las Vegas.